Each training day, Train to Rain with Pastor Greg V. Hurd. And it was all going to be orchestrated and administrated and ruled over by Nimrod. Nimrod dies and his wife, Semiramis, uh, because she's afraid of losing her position because of Nimrod's death, actually becomes pregnant and says that the sun god impregnated her with Nimrod and that he was going to be reincarnated, you see, reincarnated through and that she was not only his wife, but now she was going to be his mother. And she gave birth to Tammuz, which was their son, but people saw him as reincarnated Nimrod. Now, this is where you get the mother and child idolatry, the mother and child that transferred over through periods of time from Isis to Horus, I believe. I may be getting those a little bit mixed up, but you begin to see the mother and child that immediately through the times and through the times of the Gentiles uh, morphed into Mary and the baby Jesus. And so the enemy preemptively set that in motion culturally uh, to take away you see this revelation, to steal this revelation of a virgin conceiving a child. So he proactively went to try to dilute that to where when it truly happened on God's timetable, you see thousands of years later, that it would be discredited. You see, he plays chess, not checkers. I've told you that a hundred times. You need to hear it a hundred more. You see, this is a great chess match. God moves and the devil reacts and responds. You see, when he said in the garden, the seed of the woman, the enemy already knew what he was talking about. Half the church don't even know what he's talking about, but the devil knew exactly what he was talking about. And so the seed of the serpent began to work through and began to create an alternative society, an alternative kingdom. And that kingdom is still alive today. It's alive in your music, it's alive in your media, it's alive in your entertainment, it's alive in your politics, and it's alive in the United States of America. Boy, it's quiet out there. Hallelujah. (laughs) It's quiet out there. I bet you're glad that I'm running out of time. But notice he says when when he divided the nations, he fixed their borders of the people, so he set them in, in, in uh, you know, areas of the world and gave them cultures and gave them a language to where they could communicate with one another. And then he says, he divided them according to the number of the sons of God. Now that is the Hebrew, benai Elohim, and it just simply means angels. It means angels. Basically, these rebellious angels were, were basically in union with these worshipers, with Nimrod, trying to bring about and overtake the world by trying to bring into union the second heaven in which they were rebelling in to earth and to take over earth and to get it back to what it was before the flood. Okay? So God, as he has done, you know, and will do in this end of times uh, and, and has done, he says, you want these gods? You can have them. I'm going to disinherit the nations of the world. I'm going to disinherit you. And I'm going to take a man out of this same group of people. And I am going to build a nation with him so that I can bring Shiloh. I can bring the seed of the woman. I can bring the Redeemer. I can bring the Mashiach. I can bring the Messiah through. Because he had to have a line that would stay true and pure to him to bring that scarlet thread of redemption, Jesus Christ the righteous, amen, the seed of the woman. Okay, so he disinherited them. So what happened when these people culturally began to go to different places of the world and create cultures, they took with them these sons of God. 
And these sons of God began to w- desire to be worshipped and to be, you know, uh, you know, to be as little gods in these cultures. And it doesn't matter what geographical location you go in this world, majority of everything is tied to these gods. Their belief systems, their education systems, uh, their monetary systems, the way that they conduct themselves, you know, uh, regardless of whether education is there, the people are motivated, manipulated, and controlled by the belief systems that these sons of God, these rebellious angels, created. They created a pantheon of gods that needed to be worshipped and appeased in order to get certain favor for the people that were in that particular culture. You see it in Latin America, you see it in the Orient, you see it all over Europe, you see it everywhere, that this is a vital part, that there is absolutely no delineation between a belief system, an economic system, a, um, uh, an education system. It's all woven together. As much as they try to separate it, it just never fully separates. You can go to India and you can begin to see that there is, you know, uh, just beliefs in all of these, all of these gods and it affects their lives. It affects how they, who they marry, how they go into business, what they do in life. And you can go all over the world, even in the United States of America, and these things factor in. Okay? So understand that. See, when you understand that these fallen, rebellious angels have created this world system and everything about it, that they have inserted their names in almost everything that is about humanity. Every pill or every, you know, medical um, uh, terminology has a God attached to it. Every planet that we look except for Earth is a name of a God attached to it. Uh, in the science world, even though they say that they are for science and they do not believe in um, in other gods, why did the Apollo missions use Apollo? Why did the Mercury missions use Mercury? They did it for a specific reason. Now, they may not know fully what they're doing, and there may not be some kind of intended plan, but they would even time the launch and time the landing of the moon landings in regards to some kind of solar cycle that was in regards to some worship of some god. So don't tell me that they they have purposely put themselves in the etymology of human society. And they are continuing. We can't can't go through life without uttering at least a, a compound version of their name. Hallelujah. I feel like a crazy nut up here, but I'm telling you the truth. They came to create a system, a system that's keeping you in bondage. Dare I say it, but even democracy is a system made by these fallen angels. And it's one of the greatest versions of, uh, you know, the governance of, of humanity. Because it gives you the appearance of freedom. But as we see today, that is not the case. It's time to pray. It's time to reign within the system of the beast. See, the only way I can reign in the system of the beast is that I have to be, now listen to this, Jesus said it, In the world, but not of the world. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to close this out. I've got to be in the world, but not of the world. You know, Daniel is the greatest example of that. 
Daniel did not lose his identity when he was taken captive into the system of the beast. They wanted to, in fact, they did. They changed his name and then they schooled him in all of their, you know, indoctrination of their gods. In fact, he was, his name and the name of his Hebrew friends were all changed to, because their names were given to them, you see, with, with Jehovah or Elohim, Daniel, Mishael, as, you know, these were all n- names that, that gave honor to Yahweh, Elohim, Jehovah. Okay? When they went into the system of the beast, the names were changed. You see, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to eat at his table, partake of his stuff, get your appetite to where it can, it can only be pleased with what he offers. And then he wants to change your identity and your name. And right now, that's what's happening in the United States of America. Her identity is being robbed out from under her. And your identity and my identity is trying to be stolen. Okay? See, Daniel wouldn't eat of the table. He said, give me pulse, which is vegetables and, 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 and fruits, and, and give me water. You know, I don't want the opulence. Because he knew that it would create an appetite in him that would cause him to be sluggish, lazy, entitled. Isn't that what American culture is all about? Entitlement now? Somebody owes you a living. Somebody owes you this. I'm waiting out for a management job while my kids are starving. Because that's what I deserve. I'm an American. I'm telling you, this system is, is like a casino. Casinos... They don't lose. Oh, they may let you win uh, here and there, but they know in the long haul they're going to take more from you than you're going to get from them. And that's what this system is about. This system will let you come and, and worship inside four walls, but you start doing it outside, it begins to buck you. It begins to say, no, that's not, that's not. The Bible's a hate book. You can't preach what the Bible says. You can't teach what the Bible says. I'm telling you, this system. See, the great thing about it and what I've been trying to instill in you all these years that we've been talking about these things is that this system's broke. <laughs> this system has been destroyed by our Savior, by our Lord. Jesus came into enemy territory. He is the rock. He comes in to build a kingdom. That kingdom is going to dispel all the other kingdoms. Now that kingdom physically is not here. He said the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. The kingdom of God is within the hearts of the people of God. We are the legislative assembly. And Jesus said, in me you're going to have peace. Listen, if you're trying to find peace by hoping that some reporters are going to come and say, it's over, everything's back to normal, you're not going to get it. If you're looking for peace to win the lottery so that your money troubles over, you're not going to get it. The only place true peace is found is in Jesus, is in Christ. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. Listen, you can have one of your best days and have one problem that can, that can, that can cause the rest of the day just to, just to feel like you haven't accomplished anything. That's life. God doesn't promise us to float around on flowery beds of ease. What he promises is, I will be with you, in Psalm 91, I will be with you in trouble and I will deliver you. Thank God for that. 
Hallelujah. What I want you to understand and know is that the more identified you are with the world system, the more pain and the more um, unhappiness you're going to have because it is passing away. But the more that you begin to get in Christ, the more victory you're going to have in your life. And I mean, that doesn't mean you're going to constantly have a full bank account, that you're constantly going to be, you know, uh, uh, healthy all the time with no symptoms whatsoever. No, when you start ascending in Christ, you're going to be attacked. But praise God. He said it, and we need to say it. Who is he that overcomes the system? but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that he's the Son of God? It says, and this is the victory that overcomes this world system, our faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. I put my faith in Jehovah Rapha and I'm healed. I put my faith in Jehovah uh, Tiskendu and I am made righteous. I put my faith in Jehovah, you know, uh, oh my God, Jehovah Jireh. And he is my provider. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm telling you, he's here to break the system. Hallelujah. To break the system. He broke it. We need to stand in it. We are in the system, but we're not of the system. Hallelujah. Well, I've run out of time. Maybe we'll continue on. Um, as I state, we will probably just be after this week, we'll just be online on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights uh, as we begin to assimilate and get back together. So a reminder to all of you that tuned in later, we will be open, but what that means is, is that we won't be necessarily open like a grand opening like a coming back. If you desire to be here to worship God and to hear the word, and you can abide by the social distancing procedures that are put in place, then we'd love to have you Sunday. However, it is not a requirement, and we're not going to twist your arm to come here. We are still going to be streaming live and in color into your home. So we would encourage you, because we do not have children's classes available that if you have children that you feel that you don't necessarily want to wrestle with, that you just stay at home and enjoy the content from the uh, comfort of your own home. But for those of you that have been texting us and saying, hey, can I come and sit in and stuff like that, you're welcome to come in here. I am taking this week by week. I am not making a blanket statement on what May is going to look like because the uh, information changes from day to day. We have an idea of what Governor Stitt has outlined, and we are going to abide by those policies. However, things can change, and we need to be ready. So, God bless you. I look forward to seeing you. We can't really hug and kiss and do all those wonderful things during this time, but we'll get back, right back to it. And, uh, you know, we're, it's going to be a little odd, but if that's, if that's something that you desire, I do not want to forbade anyone from worshiping the Lord and praying because I think we need it. I think we need it as a church. So God bless you and good night. We love and we appreciate you greatly.